Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we find ourselves in Daytona Beach. We are here at the Daytona International Speedway which is home to one of the biggest races in all of NASCAR, the Daytona 500. So tag along and get ready to start your engines. We begin our voyage here inside at the Motorsport Hall of Fame of America Museum. This is gonna show us a little bit of the history behind this awesome sport and teach us a bit more about Daytona itself. This museum is an absolute dream come true for any fans of racing. And since they cover all manner of motorsport racing, it's not just the typical cars you'll see, but they even had a few bikes and boats. They also do a fantastic job of showing you more current vehicles and some true classics from way back in racing history. Being the Motorsports Hall of Fame, you get a chance to look back at all these legends. They have great plaques made up of everybody that's been inducted into the Hall of Fame, and they're scattered throughout all of the different exhibits you can see here. Pretty cool. There are nine main categories that someone can qualify for in order to be inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame. These categories are pretty broad reaching and contain aviation, power boats, drag racing, motorcycles, pretty much anything you can think of when it comes to motorsports. They've also set aside a little section right in the middle where you can see displays about all the current year inductees into the Hall of Fame and a few of the artifacts that really defined their careers. You can tell that there has been a lot of care and true love for racing put into every inch of this museum. Each display is exciting and dynamic and even if you're not that big a fan of racing or don't know much about motorsports, you're still going to find something that catches your eye. Behind me is a car belonging to Richard Petty himself, who is actually nicknamed the King for how many times he won. Here at Daytona, he brought in a stunning seven victories. In a career that spanned 34 years, Richard Petty won an astounding 200 races, including seven Winston Cups. That's amazing. A few other drivers are highlighted here as well, such as Ken Miles, who recently shot into the popular eye with the movie Ford vs. Ferrari, where he was played by Christian Bale. They decided to show you a little bit about the true story of his life. Here we have the heritage of Daytona. This takes us through from the humble beginnings to the amazing American race that it is today. The beginnings of the Daytona track reach all the way back to 1902, when it was hardly a professional looking track. They would actually start on a nearby highway and then literally turn onto the beach. The majority of Daytona's track was just right there in the sand. This location proved to be a hit with drivers and audiences alike. So soon, plans were in place to improve the track and make it even better. They broke ground on the new International Speedway in 1957 and were officially opened two years later in 1959. Here's a big picture of what the old beach track used to look like and you can see the cars have made the turn and are right there on the sand, right alongside the water. It may not be as fancy as the modern day tracks we have now, but it looks like it was certainly exciting. As an added bonus, they had an actual piece of the highway part of the track right here in the museum for you to walk on. 
on February 22nd, 1959, 42,000 people attended the inaugural Daytona 500. The race became legendary, and even today is something that any driver who manages to win can be proud about for the rest of their life. This race is commonly called the Great American Race, and by many is considered to be the Super Bowl of NASCAR. It's definitely a stamina-filled challenge, as once the race is over, each driver will have driven 500 miles, equaling 200 laps on the track. Let's look at some winners of this big event. And here we have the wall of winners. This is every driver who's ever won the Daytona 500. It starts with the very first one up here with Lee Petty in 1959, and then stretches all the way down where they're just waiting to put the next winner's face. As you look through the wall of winners, you may notice a few faces up there more than once. As we talked about, Richard Petty's won here seven times, but five other drivers have actually won this prominent race three times each. So, they get represented on the wall several times. Soon, the 2022 winner, Austin Sendrick, will have his face here as well. Now that we know a little bit more about Daytona 500 and racing as a whole, let's head outside. On your way over to the actual track, there's a lot of fantastic things to see outside. One of which is the Daytona 500 Champions Walk of Fame. Here, we have the handprints of many of the legendary racers who've won this race. This is a great addition that really adds some character to the outside of the International Speedway. You can walk down this pathway and see the handprints of all the drivers who won as it goes backwards in time towards the very first one. Now unfortunately, they didn't start doing this in 1959, so they don't have every single driver who's ever won, but they certainly had a good portion of them. You've also got to stop by and make sure you see the memorial to Dale Earnhardt Sr. He was a legendary driver beloved by many who unfortunately lost his life here during the 2001 race. Now we're gonna head up into the actual spectator section of the racetrack so you get a chance to see what it would be like if you were here seeing the Daytona 500. Though it's empty now, don't let that fool you. At full capacity, this speedway holds 101,000 fans. And here we are, prime seats, just waiting for the race to begin. This is where all the spectators would be looking out down on the track. This would be your view from right at the starting line. As you can see, they're getting ready for some of their bike events coming in. So they got all those big humps of dirt there. But the track turns right over there and you could watch the cars all the way around. But anybody who buys a ticket can see what the seats are like and look out over the track. We're here for something a little more special. We're gonna actually go out onto the track. Come on. So now we have loaded onto a tram and super exciting. They're gonna take us out onto the track and we're gonna get a hands-on experience with the actual speedway. For this journey, our tram brought us in through gate number one over on the left side of the track. You get led up through service roads up until you can get to the actual entrance down to the real track itself. And along the way, you are treated to some spectacular views of the entire raceway. Getting to see the track from all these different vantage points and angles really gave you an appreciation for just how big Daytona is. The size makes perfect sense though, considering that just one lap around is two and a half miles. The front straight of the track is 3,800 feet and the back straight is 3,000 feet. However, even with these long distances, it takes less than a full minute for a NASCAR car to go all the way around during a race. That's crazy fast. This was actually the very first racetrack 
to have a tri-oval shape. Instead of it being just a regular oval, the tri-oval was great for helping spectators see not only the cars when they were near them, but away from them. It gave them the perfect angle to keep an eye on their favorite driver throughout the entire race. And that was important. You didn't want to miss any of the excitement in the turns. Speaking of turns, here are the banked walls that make those turns possible. Daytona's walls are up at a 31 degree bank. Then over at the start and finish line, they have an 18 degree bank. Pretty difficult to walk on, much less drive. Coming around the bend, it's easy to imagine what drivers must see as they're racing around going for that glory. Granted, they're going a whole lot faster than we were. However, there are some advantages to taking your time as you get to enjoy and take in the sights a little bit more. You can look over and enjoy the poll here, which is going to show you where people's rankings are or during qualifiers, let you know who's on top. We also got to see the track for Bike Week that was happening soon. There's actually lots of races that happen here besides the Daytona 500, many of them just as exciting. But of all the places to see, I was most excited to see the finish line. One of the great traditions here at Daytona is signing the start and finish line before the race. So we got our Sharpie, you know we got to sign it. There we go. Abnormal Voyages, sign my name, 2022. Ultimately, the Daytona International Speedway is not only an important piece of NASCAR and racing history, but I think it's important to American history. It's part of our pop culture and it's something that helps bring people together. What more could you want than that? And where better to end our voyage than Victory Lane? Thanks for racing with us, adventurers. My name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. We'll see you in the next one.